and Arlene here, Hi. and this is going to be the first episode of a six-part series that we're going to be doing called Welcome to the Hobby, because this kind of came to me that there's really not a good what am I doing type of thing. It's, I'm going to try, we're going to try and bullet point some ideas and... I came prepared with questions. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, as you guys have seen in the past, where James would help me to create a Nerf Blaster of my own, I just had a lot of questions. I was just following his instructions on what to do, but I didn't know why I was particularly doing those things. So we'll have, like, say, a video specifically on modding and what each modification does and what it would mean. Um, so right now we want to really get started on what is the Nerf hobby, what is it about, how to get into it, and I guess just and, the different aspects of the whole community. Because it is a community at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah, it, it is. And it's also a question of what do you want out of it, because... I mean, in this current day and age, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have Discord and all that kind of stuff, which is great to get into the community. But unfortunately, when I had started the hobby, we were all on old school forums. and That's rough, buddy. <laughs> but, That's real rough. But, the, but no, in, in a way, it actually was much more helpful in the hobby because back then we had a much easier resource pool okay. because on, which is actually still active, and I'll have the link down below, uh, Nerf Haven was a great source of not just being a community and making posts and showing off all of your stuff, but there were sections where it was just, I did this mod, here's my step-by-step -step how to do it. Okay. And you can and you can do that on Facebook, but one, after like two, three weeks, that post is gone and you're never finding it again. Okay. So yes, yeah, so now so. we are creating that resource for you guys that hopefully you can go to if it's something you're interested in and you... Before you dump in, let's be honest, all of the finances to get started in the hobby, is it something you really want to do? So yeah. I came prepared with questions as someone who's just been viewing it from an Afar. outsider perspective. <laughs> <laughs> you, you dip your toe in every once in a while to see how the water feels. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I want to make sure that I ask those questions from my perspective, throw in anything that I might not be asking or may not know to ask, mm -hmm. and... Yeah, so hopefully yeah. this series will, will help a lot of you guys out. Yeah, so. so, my turn to interview you. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so, the Nerf hobby. How... I know Nerf is just one single brand. Right. So, what are some other ones, like, what are the differences between the different brands? Right, so, it it's usually referred to as the Nerf hobby in and of itself, but again, like you had said, Nerf is a single brand. There are plenty out there that are in many ways actually better than Nerf itself. Um, but we use the term Nerf hobby because that's where it kind of started and that's, you know, the founding. It's it's like saying, oh, I got to make a Xerox, you know, when you're just making a copy on whatever. Or, oh, I got hurt, I need a Band-Aid. You know, any self-adhesive bandage is referred to as that. Or, yeah. I need a Kleenex. It's a tissue. <laughs> Got so, it. you know, but you see where I'm going with that. Because besides Nerf, um, which, you know, yes, was the catalyst for a lot of things, you have brands out there uh, such as Busby, which actually do make some decent products. Um, their, their downside is they're usually a little bit more, I would say, kid-friendly. Okay. So, unfortunately for... Um, adults who, or larger people who are within the uh, community, tend to not usually gravitate towards those because you have to kind of work at redoing handles and stuff like that. Because so it must be for for me having the child size hands that I have. Oh yeah, must be would be perfect for you. Okay, see that's something I never yes. would have known. Okay, yes, that's very good. And, though. and if you are interested. If you are heavily interested in Busby, um, go check out Mongoose Jake, who is basically our community's, like, not even just liaison, but just, like, overall knowledge factory of anything in all Busby, because he is our Busby enthusiast. Um, but you also have brands like, especially now so, um, Xshot, which came a little after Busby. And they actually do make really good stuff. Uh, they don't usually have, like, the clip system that Nerf is kind of known for. Okay. But uh, theirs is more proprietary. Also, they do have slightly smaller darts. But you can use, a f for the most part, full-length Nerf darts in them. And with the catalyst now of half darts, um, 
you mod those up and you're able to basically use anything. Uh, you also have Dart Zone, which has really come big into the hobby because they're actually catering to the hobby itself because okay. you have things that they make that are just, okay, these are just like fun little plink toys, you know, kind of on the brand, uh, kind of on the Nerf level. But then you have your Pro Series. So they've actually started making blasters that are catered towards the hobbyists that are hitting those kind of, like the... Those when, particular benchmarks. Yeah, like you're, what, what's you're the hitting level? those... Be- yeah, you're hitting those benchmarks. Like, they're actually making blasters that you can go to Target and buy that use the half darts that we use okay. and will hit, like, kind of the velocities that would be considered, like, super stock but can also hit competitive levels. Okay, so, so. Lit- so as you said, so there's these multiple different brands. Right. They all each kind of have their own twist to them because I always kind of saw them as one or the other they're not very comparable they definitely do have their differences very interesting to know Um, yeah and you also even have uh some like community built brands uh orange modworks which really isn't big anymore but they were one of the first to actually start making stuff for the hobby uh you have worker who makes who makes hobby grade blasters um and you also have a plethora of uh people who make and build 3D printed blasters. Uh, so. I was going to ask about 3D printed and like I know you make your own dark yeah. stuff like that. I have those questions yeah. on a separate thing because I know we're having a whole mod episode specifically. Yeah, so th- those, will be, those will come later on. But definitely but. good to know that just starting off, if you don't like one brand, there are those other options and it's not, they're one, they're not one-to-one. Yeah, the, yeah, the old tagline of it's nerf or nothing is honestly just a huge joke right now because i didn't even think of that it's it's basically everything but nerf interesting very good to know because again finances getting into any hobby is always the the tricky part so good to know that there's yes different options out there awesome all right next was so my next question kind of goes into what are the different things that you can get out of the hobby okay so the hobby itself isn't just about modding the blaster. It's you also one make friends, which is always a good thing. Um, but there's also different aspects to it. There's the idea of just doing cosmetic mods, which I mean, I do a lot of things. <laughs> um, but you know, if you want to just you know learn how to do cosmetic mods, make really nice props, you can do that. Um, which is usually my aesthetic. Yes. <laughs> Which we have done before. We have. Yes. We also have the other thing we got to work on, but that's for a later time. Yes. And <laughs> subscribe if you want to know what that's all about. <laughs> but you also have, uh, you know, your local clubs that will go to, you know, a park or rent out a paintball field or something like that. And you're able to go play, like, all variety of games. Like, uh, the most common one in our hobby was always known as 315, which is you get two teams... You start off, you have three lives and 15 second respawns. So, okay. So, so it's not just, I buy something, I play with it, say, in the backyard and hang out on a wall. That's not really what it is. It's yeah. There's a whole community to it. Yeah. But obviously, you if you want to hang out on the wall, you're more than welcome exactly. to. Exactly. Uh, you okay. also have uh, Humans vs. Zombies, the okay. HVZ college games. Um, most college campuses, or some college campuses, have HVZ clubs and Nerf clubs uh, that you can go join. There are events like End War or um, uh, Ragnaroktoberfest or Maryland Mayhem where, you know, you get community, you know, people from the community all across the country uh, coming in for these events and then having like a huge HVZ game. And those are, those can be fun if they're run correctly. Um, I'm not going to say they're all perfect, (laughs) but... You know, you have that aspect where, and then you also have the the type that you want to do. You can, ha- there's all, well, actually, before I get into that, there's also com- competitions. Like, most of them oh, like are... like fledged Yeah. They, they start, they, they've been kind of community-driven here and there, but there actually have been sponsors. Um, last year during Entwar was the finales of the Dart Zone Pro Foam Tour, and... There have been kind of offshoots of that, like, popping up that have had actual, like, you know, decent sponsorships where, you know, P3 
people actually make teams for competitive games okay, now. Good. So, yeah, those are actually uh, those have actually started uh, becoming part of the hobby, which I think is actually kind of cool. I don't know if I, it would be personally my fit, but it wouldn't be something I would be remiss as to not give a shot to. No, definitely. It's, you know. again, as someone who tends to be more of a minimalist or if I need something, to, if I make something and I have it, I like to be able to use it. I like the idea of there are different options out there to my specific, I guess, level mm-hmm. of activity and play to yeah. really up that yeah. that usability of, of my stock. Yeah, and the other thing is, like, with your local community, if your local community is, like, a high FPS cap or something, and you show up with, like, something kind of, like, somewhat stockish off the wall, don't be afraid to, like, not do those things. Because when I first started in the hobby, like, I didn't know about, like, homemade blasters or anything like that. I showed up to my first war with an Alpha Trooper with an upgraded spring, and a, and a stock Vulcan. And that was it. And But I had such a fun time there that it got me interested in, I now want to do this and try and build those. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of, like, you may be hesitant to try things, but you kind of have to put that aside a little bit and just try it regardless. Because okay. when it comes to modding things, which we'll get to more in the uh, later episode, but... You're going to break things. You're going to lose parts. You're going to gut a blaster, and it's going to be completely unrepairable in some cases. But don't look at those as, like, in a um, discouragement. Just look at it more as a learning curve. Okay. So, you know, even you show up in an event, you have something stock, you're outgunned. It's a learning curve. It's like, okay, this was really fun. I want to be more competitive. Yeah. Now I know what to do to up my game. Now, I have a question in here. I know you keep mentioning, like, stock. So what specifically does that mean? Okay. So when I, I, I and I apologize for just throwing out the terminology out there without real no, explanation. No, oh, that, that, that's what yes. this is for. <laughs> yeah. So a stock blaster is basically something you just buy right off the shelf. Okay. Like, you go, you go to your local Target or Walmart or Toy Store or whatever, and you buy... Um, or even a Goodwill. Well, most, mo- I'll say, well, most of the times. Um, and you buy, like, a hammer shot or um, a strong arm or a Saturn or something like that. You know, just a blaster that's in a box, re- retail packaging and all that stuff. That's stock. Okay. It's Stock is how as it comes. As is. Uh, super stock is more of a, you've made some upgrades to it but it's still kind of stock like you didn't really do too much to it like if you have a a spring powered blaster you just threw an upgraded spring in it and that was it like nothing else changed um a flywheel blaster which is a battery operated pistol uh, battery operated blaster um you threw imrs in there instead of your double a's okay. um imr batteries are kind yeah. of, are, they're, they're, I got that. <laughs> they're, they're, they're spicy double A's. I was about to, once you said double A's, I'm like, I'm assuming IMR is a battery. Yes. So thank you yes. for the clarification. It's a, it's, a, it, it, it's a spicy, it's a spicy double A, let's say. I like that. Um, so, and so get the flywheels revving just that little bit faster. So that, that's what we call like super stock because okay. you, you did, you did like the minimalist change to it to up the power out of it. But you can still kind of revert it back. Gotcha. So. Okay. And then I think the next thing beyond that, again, is once you get into modding, then there's that whole 3D printing element. Yes. So are there any, I'm sure we can get this into a later episode, but just for quick, Mm -hmm. is there like any regulations between the like stock, super stock, like just some modifications and 3D printing, especially for those bit of communities? Are there like limits that you're... Um, you need to keep well, in mind. well, every community has their own set of rules. Um, the majority is um, stock is usually uh, for a blaster to be considered stock. It usually can't hit over like a hundred FPS because okay. where a Nerf blaster out of the box is supposed to hit seventy-five, 
Um, but a rival blaster can hit that. Okay. So, I mean, if you're using something like a nerf rival, which is, instead of a dart, a little foam ball, uh, you're going to be over kind of like an FPS cap. Uh, humans versus zombies, usually the FPS caps are... And the F, these FPS caps that I'm referring to is basically the measured velocity of what the dart leaves the barrel at. Um, so a stock blaster usually is about... Usually will cap at like 100. Um, super stock usually is somewhere between 130 and 150. And then anything over 150 is considered modified. Wow. Okay, so that's quite a jump, for sure. Yes. Because, good thing to know, because I know for me, the only rule I know was it has to have an orange tip. Yes. That was the only one I knew. Yeah. <laughs> if you are playing outdoors, it is always smart to have the orange tip just to be on the safe side. I, um, I wouldn't but, want to do otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> that's called danger zone. Yes. <laughs> Yes, but yeah, that yeah. Th when it comes to those, that's usually where where it goes to, and usually most clubs will wind up capping something at three hundred or so. Damn. Yes, they they will get that. That's high. more than three times. A stock, yeah, yeah. But that, that's gonna leave a bruise. Yeah, it's at not least it's not pleasant. At least <laughs> it's not pleasant, but you'll know when you're getting hit at least. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Okay, when it comes to actually making that first purchase or your next purchases uh what are the different kind of businesses to go to for those things because i know you mentioned stock and stuff you can get from goodwill right target places like that are there any other resources that you right. can use um a good resource uh there are actually a lot of hobby business is that are that will carry things for modding needs mm -hmm. um I'll, couple off the top of my head is if you're looking for parts and such um out of darts is a good source uh containment crew is another good source um if you're looking for kind of just making that jump and getting 3d printed items um foam demic is a good one um friends foam works silver fox industries um if you're overseas there are other avenues um i believe monkey mods is uh, one who handle uh, you have monkey mods you got blaster parts um, they're actually overseas uh, containment crew and out of darts are stateside uh, you also have a plethora of places on Etsy that you can actually also find that will make 3d printed modified parts or um, shells for modified blasters so sounds and, like quite I, a few different sources to go to oh yeah they're, they're <laughs> They're surprisingly okay. well, we'll link good... them all below. I'm yes, assuming. yeah, I'll throw, I'll throw links down below. It's going to be a very big description box. <laughs> um, but yeah, if yeah, there are a lot of good sources, um, and the community will also let you know who are the trusted sources. Personally, I would say if I have them linked down below, it's someone who I have dealt with in the past that I would not mind going back to. Good to know. All right. My next question, mm -hmm. we touched a little bit on this in the beginning, but right. more than just power, about style. Because right. I know you tend to reference, a lot of times when you we talk about it, you will mention like a specific model. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what that model is. <laughs> I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what the details are. Go a little right. bit more into the styles, how I guess they're categorized, things like that. Because okay. I know that's always thrown me. I just go, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. I have no idea. So well, if you could go a little bit more into the different stylized aspects of the different blasters. Okay. So, well, with anything, you have your two basic ones. You either have a pistol or you have a rifled or rifle-like blaster. Um, so it's either a short boy or a long boy. Okay. Um, See, I like those better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have your. You have your. Your springers and your flywheels. A springer is something that is primary. Your primary your primary power source comes from a compression spring. Um, a flywheel blaster is a battery operated motorized blaster that has two motors with wheels on them. That basically you just have a pusher that pushes your dart into, and that's what shoots it off. 
didn't know that's what that was. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I personally am more of a Springer person. I have dabbled into flywheels. My big thing with flywheels is I just hate the sound those motors make. Because <laughs> they can get so damn loud. Um... My cat would hate that, too. My yeah. He hates any toy that has batteries in it because of the motor. Yeah. I can understand how that would get annoying. Yeah. Very so, quick. And then between, like, a full dart and a half dart, a full dart is what we would consider a standard Nerf dart. Like, if you go to, you know, whatever store and you buy an Elite dart or an AccuStrike or something like that, um, that's a full dart. It's just shy of about, like three inches long um, a half dart is exactly that it's one and a half inches long those are more for the competition or I was about to say, um, those are the ones I've ones. seen you like you make them in yes. the shop yes like, I used I, well <laughs> well much well a, a lost art we used to make the darts back in the days uh, okay. with foam backer rod hot glue a number six washer and a felt pad but <laughs> as I had mentioned where Dart Zone is catering to uh, the hobby, and even actually workers started doing this first. Uh, they were the first to actually make a commercial half dart. Okay. Um, their quality was not great at first, so they broke a lot. It's a learning curve. Yeah, it, re it really was, uh, because I think they're on like Gen 4 now. Oh, wow. Yeah, so and their darts have evolved over the years, but Dart Zone and soon X-Shot, because they're going to be releasing a pro line later this year, um, make ha actually make commercial half darts, and they're actually really good. Um, and you even have some different styles with them, but, I mean, over and all, those half darts have basically become the new standard. Interesting. So. Good to know. Yeah. All right, because, yeah, that was always kind of one of my, my bigger, what's the difference between the, like, between the full darts and the half darts yeah. and all that stuff, so... Thank you for explaining that a little bit more. You're welcome. And then uh, my last kind of big question, um, pieces of advice to getting into the hobby in general. Um, my biggest piece of advice would be is don't get discouraged. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when you first try and mod something, you might wind up breaking it. You may lose a spring, and you're just going to be like, well, now I just wasted like, you know, 15, 20 bucks on something. But... It's going to happen. Um, it's not going to be something that you're just going to be awesome at at first. And it's much like I tell my kids, you know, it's practice, practice, practice. Um, your first paint job could very well suck, but you'll get, trust me, you will get better as time goes on. Um, and as with in any hobby, and this is not to discourage people for, you know, trying to attempt to, you know, join a club or anything like that. Um, but over and all, they're going to be trolls. They're going to be those jackasses who are just like, oh, what are you making that for? Oh, that's terrible. Oh, you shouldn't do that. The one thing I will say is, for the most part, don't make anything all black. Please, don't make anything all black. That's, again, danger zone yes. area. Yes, very don't big do danger that. zone. <laughs> um, it, must, it would look really cool being very realistic, but... yes. But understand the environment you're in exactly um, from the outsider perspective <laughs> that can go very wrong very quickly exactly <laughs> but i mean there are so many things that this hobby can actually also teach you as well because you're learning things if you get into flywheels you'll learn how to solder you're going to learn about electronics and stuff like that when you get into the more um, advanced springer uh modifications you're going to start learning about like um pressure and how barrel length will affect how much output and how well your darts will do okay um because i've always wondered because i remember the first one that yeah. you had me do you're like use this spring and i'm like why am i replacing the spring and why this spring specifically so. yeah so yeah i mean that, again that stuff we'll we'll, 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 we'll touch on later in the mod <laughs> episode but yeah it's going to be one of those things of like you're going to have to like you know just play around with things. Find what you will enjoy. Like, there's a lot this hobby can offer and a lot you can get out of it. Um, like I said, just don't get discouraged. You're going to find that asshole, and that's exactly what they're, they're, they're an asshole, and just don't 
let them be the reason why it ruins your fun. Yeah. So. I, I can say from pulling from my own experiences with Pokemon Go, there's actually a town my crew avoids because the entire town is just full of toxic assholes. Uh, and so we have we built our own community separated away from them. Right. Because it, like you said, there's always going to be those people there that they create this, like, very exclusive, like, type of community and yeah. kind of block you out. Yeah, they're the, and, they're the gatekeepers who think, no, this is what you should be doing, and it's a do matter of... Do what the of, hell you want to do. Yeah. And do what makes you happy that gives you joy. Exactly. Just don't make anything all black. <laughs> be safe. Yes. First and foremost. Yes. Always be safe. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Excellent. That was kind of all of my, my main questions, at least for, for this particular episode. Okay. I have a lot more questions to kind yes. of go into, but I think you've given a good start in how to get into it, what you can get out of it. And right. And, and, and I hope this will find some people and, you know, they'll just be like, oh, you know what? I never really thought about this. You know what? I may, I, you know, you go out and you get something. And I mean, like, I know it had been touched upon that, like, you know, finances and all that stuff. This can be a pretty cheap hobby, actually, to get started in. If you go to your local Walmart, I don't know about on the East Coast here because our, our not Walmart, um, Goodwill. Uh, you can go to a Goodwill and get a fairly cheap and still usable foam dart blaster and go to home depot spend like maybe 20 bucks on what sandpaper and spray paint and you already can start doing like cosmetic mods there or even pick up a um depending on what you get but sometimes you may be able to find that one odd spring at home depot that you can actually throw into a blaster uh usually a night finder uh and just you know there you go you have a modified blaster for probably under 30 bucks that, that's pretty cool just yeah. have something all your own that you know you put you put a little bit of yourself into yeah i love that so that's sweet yeah. yay well thank you very much okay and thank you for joining us for this episode and as always if you enjoy what we do here on the channel please throw us a like and subscribe leave a comment down below let us, if you're part of the hobby how long have you been part of it and if we've encouraged you let us know and if you have any other questions please leave them below so yes. we can answer them in the future yes and oh don't forget to click that little bell icon otherwise you may not know when we're doing our silliness here on the channel and posting new episodes about welcoming you to the hobby so and oh we also have a p.o box so if Thank you'd like you. to sell some nail mail didn't even have to wait for me to do it. Love I've, it. I've been remembering it a little <laughs> bit more often. But, again, thank you for joining us for this one, and we will see you guys next time. Bye. Later.